Fisher from Green Dispensary Marketing. Excited to be back with you guys again with another interview. I'm excited to talk with Brady from Digital Awesome. Um, he's got a great solution in the cannabis industry in regards to applications, um, helping dispensaries get some sales. Really excited to learn more about his product, um, about himself personally. How are you doing today, Brady? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Excited to be here. Yeah, likewise. Um, I see you all the time on LinkedIn. You guys are doing great things in the cannabis industry. Just, it's an honor to have you on the show as well. Um, I really just want to start this off by learning a little bit more about you personally. Um, can you tell me a little about yourself, um, yourself as an entrepreneur, um, and how you got to this point? Uh, yeah, I mean, myself as an entrepreneur, both my parents own their own businesses, so I kind of grew up in that world. Um, kind of always wanted to start my own business. Um, my wife and I have been investing in real estate for a long time. So that's something that from an entrepreneurial standpoint, we've kind of built up a little bit of a rental portfolio, which has been fun. Um, I worked for Weston Hotels for 13 years. Uh, so that was not very entrepreneurial of me, but I learned some kind of fun hospitality skills in that uh, journey and actually loved that journey and helped us travel the world, which is a huge passion of ours. Um, and hopefully we can continue to do that. But then um, jumped off about a year and a half ago into this new cannabis space, uh, new to me, not to everybody else, but uh, it's been a blast. Um, I partnered up with uh, my partner, Mark, to start the business. He's been running a mobile app development company for a long time. And he saw an opportunity in cannabis and he brought me on to represent the company as far as marketing and sales. So happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's really exciting. And so actually, I think there's a little confusion. I thought you're the, the owner of the company. So is, is, is the correct term here, co-founder? Uh, yeah, co-owner, co-founder, whatever you want to call it. We're not too big on labels, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But let's learn more about the digital awesome. So that's the name of the company. Uh, correct is digital awesome. Uh, tell yeah. me a little bit more about how you came up with the idea and uh, what led you to the path that you're on right now. So digital awesome uh, was Mark's company. They've been building apps for over, uh, I think around 10 years now for all different types of industries. Um, anything from liquidation to working on things for like Tony Robbins or Gucci or different universities, all kinds of different mobile apps, even doing some web development in the past as well. Um, and he was hired on by a dispensary out of Washington, Cinder Cannabis, to build out a custom mobile app for them. And when he was doing the R&D and kind of building out that app for them, he just saw, he. Uh, basically wouldn't, I mean, we were meeting every week just as friends and kind of staying in touch, but he wouldn't shut up about this whole cannabis thing. He's like, nobody's doing anything nice or anything of quality in cannabis with his experience and apps. He just saw what was out there and he just thought it was a kind of just frankly embarrassing for the industry of what he had seen out there. Um, and so he said that the customers deserved a better experience and dispensaries with all the money that they invest in branding could definitely do it better. So we've scrapped that existing older business and kind of gotten rid of most of our older clients and focus solely on being the best cannabis mobile app developers and trying to improve every single day, which we can talk about that later too. Yeah, and from what I've seen, it looks like you guys really are tip top quality, uh, loving everything about it. Um, there's actually a lot of features um, that I've seen so far that I haven't seen on other similar services. Um, and kind of on that note, um, in your opinion, how does Digital Awesome stand apart from other dispensary apps in the industry? Um, one, I think just our continued vision to grow and get better. So between us coming up with ideas, um, working with our dispensary partners, we do monthly meetings with all of our dispensary partners. So if they bring ideas of something they want implemented into the app, that just makes the apps better and better and better. So we're always searching for things. Um, we just found out how Target rolls out their promotions inside their app. And so we built that into our cannabis apps for a deals page, um, things like that. Um, Starbucks offers games inside their app seasonally to where they can do um, like 
every time you place an order or spend ten dollars, you get to enter to play a game. So we're building that into the apps now. We're building in dig- digital punch cards. I think we're the only ones doing achievements and games um, inside the app. So there are other app developers that can make a really great shopping experience but we've seen nobody doing anything like us as far as gamification and enjoyment and um, really interacting with the customers as far as a holistic brand experience. Um, And the whole point of that is to make it sticky. Um, And I mean, yeah. Yeah, and so that's actually a question I wanted to follow up a little later on um, is the the game features. And so I've noticed that you guys have achievements. Um, can Can you break that down a little bit? in more detail and kind of how it works and kind of how it standardizes the, the shoppers. Yeah. So just like, I mean, I always think of like McDonald's monopoly game. It kind of gets people to <laughs> shop a little bit differently than they might. So we'll run custom achievements like, Hey, if you refer five friends, you get a badge and it lights up and it uh, glows. And some, some of them we've set up to even vibrate their phone when they've achieved something cool. Uh, so it really reinforces behavior inside the customer and makes it more fun for them. So if they see, hey, I've got a re- I've referred four friends, I need to refer a fifth to get this achievement, they'll do it. And you can either assign points to those achievements or just give them the dopamine hit of having some fun shopping and uh, giving that experience. Uh, we have stuff like reading blog content inside the apps. We can do achievements for that. We can do achievements tied to amount of time shopping in a month or a quarter or a year spending over a hundred dollars you can get an achievement all kinds of different stuff the the amount of things that you can build into an achievement is endless you can do some really really fun stuff and i think that that really separates us and just makes a customer have a lot more fun and want to and want to stick to that specific dispensary versus just shopping for the best deal because customers can't I guess, see a value of um, what an achievement is worth or what these points are worth, but they know that they're earning with one brand. So they'll stick with that brand. Just like me coming from Marriott hotels, how many people are extremely loyal to Marriott hotels because guess what? They've got status and then they want to keep earning on that same vein. So kind of the same thing with uh, cannabis. We want to make that loyalty extremely strong with the dispensary. Yeah. Um, I'm really curious um, about how Digital Awesome could potentially, if if it does, compete with other kind of big players, you know, like Flow Hub, Dutchy. What what do you think about that? So we're kind of in a unique position. We don't really compete with anybody, nor do we want to. Um, Alpine and Spring Big, they offer mobile apps, but it's kind of a different category all to themselves. They've got kind of more basic wallet style apps, not anything custom or engaging. It's just kind of basically ability to check your points and rewards from an integration standpoint. Our goal is to integrate with everybody. So we actually do integrate with Alpine. We integrate with Spring Big so we can pull those rewards. And so we don't care if our customers work with Alpine, Spring Big, Dutchie, Jane, we're building out integrations with uh, Dispense right now. We have one other one that we can't announce yet. We build out integrations with OnFleet, for their uh, delivery services. So folks can track their deliveries inside the app, which nobody's doing anything like that. Um, OnFleet loved what we were doing so much that they actually came to us a couple of weeks ago that they said they want us to start building their driver apps for them just because they've never seen anybody doing anything like we're doing in this space. Um, So kind of fun. I don't, I guess that, I don't know if that answers your question, but we don't really have much for competition that we see. Yeah. yeah, I guess I was just kind of curious if that was kind of your ambitions is to kind of uh, take in, go into some of their realms and kind of do what they do. Uh, maybe not necessarily right now, but in the future. Yeah, our goal is to be the best mobile app developers in cannabis. That's it. So we're not going after web development. We're not going after text messaging anytime soon I'm, or ever, I should say. We don't, that's not something we care to do. Um, we're believers of there's companies that excel at certain things like we excel at mobile app development the whole all-in-one approach of like i'm going to hire one company and they're going to be the best at everything is so few and far between everybody has their specializations but we have yet to see anybody in this industry do everything great um 
So generally, if you want an all-in-one suite, you're going to be losing quality. Yeah, maybe we could like all come together and make like a super big package, you know. <laughs> working, working on it. Working on it. <laughs> Um, and so another thing I was curious about, you're, you're mentioning the referral boosters, the referral bonuses. Um, how do those work usually? So from the referral space, we can um, tie into the POS. Uh, usually we're integrated with the e-com as well, but we can tie in and a lot of them will actually set spend minimums. So referring a customer that spends $50 or re referring a friend that spends $100. Um, the referrals are super simple and easy too. We built it. I mean, the shopping experience is just like what you would expect in 2024, just like you would expect from like McDonald's, Starbucks, anybody. I can click a share button inside the app and it pulls up my latest text messages and I can start sending it out to whoever I want to in like one click. So it's extremely easy. I don't need to like pull up a QR code and let my friends scan it. I just text them the invite and it's, it's so simple and easy. Huh. Another thing I'm curious about um, is the role of push notifications in the app, <clears throat> kind of specifically how it helps engage the customers in any other kind of goals that you hope to accomplish with your push notifications? So push is something we didn't anticipate being as big of a deal as it is. <laughs> so we started out with the goal of building the best apps in cannabis. Um, We've gotten a bit of a tailwind, which has been great, which has been push notifications. Obviously, folks are having challenges with texting these days. I mean, we hear it on almost every single call that we have. And so dispensaries are looking for a new solution to contact their customers. And push notifications is great because everybody has to opt in. So the deliverability of everybody that's opting in for those is 100%, right? If somebody's opting in for it. So... When we started, like I said, we didn't anticipate that being a big deal. We never charged for push notifications. We had no intention to charge for push notifications because they don't cost anything. So we don't want to pass on any expense to our customers. Uh, that being said, if a customer wants to use their existing platform like Alpine or Springvig, they can also send their push notifications from those backends as well through our system too. So if they want to use those systems, they can continue to do that. Um, but I think the big thing about push notifications, which I try to get through to uh, our customers and potential customers all the time is if somebody has a poor app experience, it just makes sense that they're going to delete the app. They're not going to continue to shop on the app, which if they're going to delete the app, the push notifications are worthless because you're not going to send a push notification to somebody that doesn't have the app anymore. You can't. So that's where we see the importance of a quality shopping experience with the fun and everything to keep them hooked and on um, to even keep that line open to send push notifications because we download apps of dispensaries every single day and half of them don't even work. You can't get on them. They they crash. Well, the customer's not going to keep that. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great points all around. Uh, but next question, I'm sure you get this one a lot whenever you're on a sales call or whatever, but um, outside of the logos and the color schemes, how customizable is Digital Awesome? We have yet to turn down a request that I can think of of something we build into an app. Also, our pricing is all inclusive. So we, if you say you want to throw in this idea or this idea or this idea, we don't charge extra for those things. So we look at it as we're just making the apps better and better and better. And so whatever that idea is, great. Let's just throw it in and let's let's start building it. Um, so everything's customizable from the layout to the deals pages, to the achievements, to the games. Everything is customizable inside the app. Um, menu layout, everything like that. So we talked to some customers that have, I mean, we're getting a lot of people that had those old school kind of wallet style apps that are not happy with them, that they've told us that basically we got to pick our background image and what color we want. And that's their customization. I'm like, that's not, <laughs> that's not really fun. And I, I think we get the feeling a lot from the marketing teams that they're frustrated and they don't have any input or have any capability to modify anything we are looking at improving every customer app every month and making it better and better and better. So if we need to tweak something to improve conversions, uh, we'll do that. We'll do whatever it's needed there. 
Great. So kind of to clarify, this is our, there's a couple more questions. So this was kind of a quick little follow up. And so when you're charging your packages, essentially what you're doing is you'll charge it one time upfront. And then from there, you'll have lifetime support on it. So we do an upfront and then we have a monthly subscription fee, which covers access to their analytics engine. We use mix panels so everybody can track every single button that gets clicked in the app, how the promotions are performing inside the app. They can see everything inside a dashboard inside a mix panel. So we cover the mix panel and then that software subscription fee also covers all the new development too. So if they want a new feature built out or they want to change their color scheme or anything like that, it's all included in that. And that's how we can afford to do it. Um, yeah. As a, I mean, development process, what we charge if somebody wanted to build on their own would be 10 to 20 times as expensive as we charge if they just hired an outside firm or would have hired us back in the day to build a custom mobile app for them. Yeah, that's really awesome. Sounds like a great service, honestly. Uh, just a couple more questions for you. Uh, one thing I'm really curious about are some of kind of your favorite pieces of data, some of your top results that you've seen from dispensaries that you're working with. Do you have any data points you'd like to share? Yeah, so retention. Uh, our retention numbers are extremely high for the app, so user engagement, getting them to return to the app is extremely high. Uh, getting visits, we track visits per week, visits per month, and those tend to be extremely high, higher than what I thought would have been coming into the industry. Uh, and then repeat orders. So we track a lot of different metrics throughout our system. Um, it's very interesting state to state how things differ as far as cart totals and stuff like that. But we're always looking at getting people on the app more often and then increasing cart totals. Those are the two numbers that we focus on as much as we possibly can. So we've built in a recommendation tool inside the apps as well, where folks can um, like heart favorite a product. So when it comes back in stock, we can send them a push notification automatically. And then also on the post order checkout process, we have a thumbs up, thumbs down button. So they can say if they like the product or not, which also feeds that algorithm, which obviously isn't going to lead to more sales because every time somebody adds something in the cart, it's here's some other things you might enjoy as well based on past purchase history. Awesome. Well, very great information, direct, straight to the point. Um, if I was a dispensary owner, I'd buy your app right now. Um, <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good compliment. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll talk in 10 years. You never know, right? But, yeah, usually when um, people see it, I mean, I would say nine times out of 10, they're surprised and they're excited and ready to roll. Uh, obviously, if they can afford our services, that's one thing. Um, but I mean, there's only been a couple that are like, they don't grasp the concept of what we're doing, but it's okay. Yeah, well, it's not forever. You can't sell everything to everyone. You know, so it is what it is. Um, go, yeah. go ahead for a last question for you. Um, definitely appreciate your time being here. Um, in the future, what do you envision as the future of digital loss? Awesome? Do you envision the exit strategy? Do you envision um, tons of growth? Or what, what's, what excites you the most? And what, what do you see happening? Uh, one, it's been fun to connect with people like you in the industry. I mean, cannabis is a different world. Everyone's, not everyone, but mostly everyone is super cool and fun to hang out with and chill to meet. Um, I mean, getting on my first Zoom meetings and seeing people light up a joint on the meeting, I was like, this is this is a new world. So this is, this is kind of fun. Um, I was, it was cool because they actually signed up for two apps on that call, which was great. So that was whatever uh, comes with that. But uh, future-wise, we just want to continue to grow at the pace that we're growing. We've um, grown pretty quickly. We just want to stay ahead of the game. Uh, we want to stay so far ahead as far as technology advancements that nobody can ever catch up to us is kind of the goal. Uh, and then uh, just having a slew of amazing customers, like all of our customers are such great partners of ours. Uh, they're sending us referrals all the time now um, with friends that are in the industry. So becoming a name brand in cannabis, like a, like a, not as big, like obviously Dutch is huge, but I want dispensaries to actually know who we are. Let's just put it that way. Um, to have at least heard of us. So people like Happy Cabbage or Dutchy or Jane or just these common names that people hear in the industry, we want to be known, I guess. Yeah, we'll definitely think that you're well on the way to getting there, if not, you know, 50, 60% of the way there. Um, <laughs> they're definitely issue the best in the future. 
Um, definitely appreciate your time. Uh, so thanks for talking with me. Do you have anything else that you'd like to say as a last little spoil? spoil? No, I mean, if anybody wants to chat, uh, hit us up at Digital Awesome Apps or follow us on LinkedIn. We try to uh, release all of our newest features, um, celebrate client successes, client wins as well on there. Uh, so stay in touch. And thanks so much for giving us the opportunity to share what we're about. And um, hopefully we'll meet in person one of these days. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, this is Brady from Digital Awesome. If you want to learn more about him, um, you can head on over to digitalawesomeapps.com, correct? Yep. And, or just connect with him on LinkedIn. Brady Halls, is that how you pronounce it? H-A-L-S-E. You actually got it correct. Great work. Oh, wow. <laughs> almost, almost points. That was good. That was good. I don't know what to pronounce his name wrong. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Brady. And um, definitely excited to see you go in the future.